There's just a little scratch and some soreness. No big deal, really. But the vaccination campaign against COVID-19 is going far too slowly in Africa. Only 5% of the population has been immunized, rather than the 20% planned. Vaccine shortages are no longer the problem. There are sufficient supplies and highly motivated vaccination aids, such as Nurse Harriet Awuwa. But very few people are getting their jabs, due above all to local problems. The blue cold packs are finally ready. Nurse Harriet Awuwa is impatient. She and her team want to vaccinate 200 people against the coronavirus today. They're in one of the most isolated regions in Kenya, in Siyea, on the country's western border. They had wanted to leave an hour earlier, but the weather forecast predicts 31 degrees Celsius today. The vaccines must be kept cold, and the team only has household cool boxes available to them. The ice packs are in, are in a good condition to sustain the vaccines. But uh, whenever we see the temperatures rising, we normally change the ice packs so that the vaccines are at a, a, a good temperature. Harriet broke her leg recently, and the ride on bumpy, sandy tracks is painful for her. But the small hospital in Siea is hopelessly understaffed. Harriet insists on coming along to help. It's, it's a passion to help other people, because, you know, with COVID, we want everybody to get vaccinated. Today we are going to Uhui. From there to here is almost 500 bob. So some of them cannot afford that money. 500 bob is equivalent to four euros. Only a few group taxis drive as far as the remote region. The team sets off and wants to get to the village in an hour and start vaccinating people. But as they pass a gas station on their way out, they realize they've forgotten their vaccination campaign posters. It's another delay because the team goes back to get them. Telling people about the vaccines is at least as important as the vaccination itself. Bila Malipo, free of charge, is written in extra large letters on them. Almost everybody in that village is aware that uh, we are going there. But then the posture, we are going with it because uh, there are some people who may have not gotten the message. So when they see the posture, they'll be aware that we are there. Nearly two hours late, the truck approaches the villages. Harriet has already been on many mobile vaccination trips, and she's ready for anything. In the villages, there is no network, so uh, it, it forces us sometimes to use papers to write the names because when editing, when, when entering the names in the system. This vaccination session is taking place in a schoolyard. It's under a big mango tree, the traditional village meeting place. The team is disappointed. There are less than 30 people waiting for them. After hours of standing around, many have already gone home. They set up quickly and are ready to go. At the same time, Harriet asks some of the villagers to get more people to come out. Many of those who want to be vaccinated are older than 70 and have spent several hours under the mango tree to get the long desired jab. I'm just glad they're bringing the vaccination to us. The operation slowly gets underway. 50 villagers are given one dose by midday. The government plan says around 10 million of Kenya's population of 55 million are supposed to be vaccinated by the end of the year. That's a modest target, but the team knows that they won't meet it. Harriet is frustrated because their inability to reach the objective is often down to silly things, like not enough cars or potholed roads. At times, when we don't have the vehicle, we normally use motorbikes to go to the interior villages. Because now we, 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 are, we really want to go vaccinate them, but then at the same time we don't have the means, so it forces us to use, to use uh, motorbikes. But again, motorbikes are not safe with our vaccine carriers, so that's why sometimes if it's so hard, we just wait for support. Support should be coming from the capital Nairobi, 500 kilometers away. A few months ago, the biggest problem was that the country wasn't receiving enough vaccine. The COVAX initiative, in which richer countries would supply doses to poorer ones, got off to a slow start. Storage facilities in the capital are well stocked today, as the head of Kenya's COVID task force, Willis Akwale, can confirm. This one. 
we had initial challenges uh, to do with the supply of vaccines to the country. And, but this has greatly improved during the last three months, courtesy of dose sharing by uh, uh, the rich countries, uh, and also just an improved supply globally, with more vaccines also having been approved by WHO. Other local issues are now often the cause of the slow rate of immunization in Kenya and other African countries. Doses of vaccine have even had to be destroyed in some countries because their use by date had expired. Lack of planning and poor infrastructure are the biggest issues. In Kenya, months passed and no strategy was developed for reaching risk groups in remote areas. Politicians on national and regional levels blamed each other for the lapse. The head of the task force says the rich countries are also partly to blame. COVID brought in other challenges, socioeconomic challenges, and, 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 and governments, the economies are not performing the best. So the developed countries, if they are able to support another philanthropist to ensure that that happens, the better for the entire world, the safer the world. Some Kenyans say corruption is also hampering the vaccination campaign. The expression COVID millionaire has become common in Kenya. It's reserved for politicians and business people who got rich by skimming off of aid shipments. Embezzlement is one problem, selfishness another. Amnesty International activist Diana Gichengo says it is a scandal that above all, those most in need of protection are coming up short. The few people in the middle class who understood why we needed the vaccine took all measures to jump the queue. And that left us falling very, very far behind in terms of uh, focusing on the priority population. In my opinion, in the first phase, the only people who were priority and could not be jumped were health workers. In the village in Western Kenya, the vaccination measures are finally gathering momentum. Harriet's strategy to mobilize additional residents was a success. The line beneath the mango tree has grown longer. One trick the team uses is offering consultation for general health complaints. While one colleague does that, Harriet tells the others about the benefits of vaccination. Some villagers are already well informed. An elderly lady wants to know how she can get an online certificate. Most of the elderly, they don't have the smartphones, but there's a cyber cyber cafe around. People from the cyber cafe, most of them are, are aware of the certificates that are gotten from the www.chanjo. So when a person goes there with their ID number, they are able to download for them. Modern digital technology has come to a region where more than 30% of the people are still illiterate. The vaccination campaign makes the chasm between urban and rural populations particularly clear. Even the online registration of those who've been vaccinated must be improvised. There is a weak mobile phone network for uploading data, but many in the village don't have any official documents to upload at all. If they don't have an ID card and they don't have a passport, occasionally we use uh, their phone numbers. But there's something else that has the team even more concerned. Hardly any of the younger women are getting vaccinated. One of the few is the village primary school teacher. Rumours about bad side effects are widespread here too, and women are said to be most susceptible. Many of my friends are avoiding coming here. They're afraid that they'll supposedly die two years after vaccination. And I have to admit, I felt uneasy about it too. Rumours and fake news are among the biggest barriers in the fight against the virus. Alphonse Shiundu wants to inform. He works for the initiative Fact Check Africa and has noticed the rise in false information on social media, conspiracy theories that rich countries are trying to halt African population growth often go viral. We did a training with journalists and one of the journalists was saying when she went to take the vaccine, she, was to uh, she came back home and the friends were telling her, now for you, you will not, you, you are basically infertile, you'll never be able to carry children, and you'll never be able to carry a pregnancy to term. So, like, and you're thinking, she was so scared to take the second dose that we had to, like, show her evidence. 
What has struck Alfonso is that lots of the fake news is motivated by greed. Shady businesses want to sell their own supposed miracle cures for COVID. He tells us that shockingly, even some politicians opposed the shot. He shows a particularly controversial video of the health minister in neighboring Tanzania. So she's addressing on why this is very important to, for them to use alternative medicines, why we should not uh, trust uh, Western medicine and stuff like that. That uh, was very, very potentially dangerous and very, very misleading in the way it was styled. Because she's saying no vaccines in Tanzania, we don't have COVID, take this and you'll be safe from any viral infection. But there are other reasons why Kenyans don't want to be vaccinated. New studies show that in some parts of Africa, most of the people already have natural antibodies because the population is so young, it's suspected the virus made its way through undetected and without causing many deaths. Nevertheless, nearly all experts urgently advise vaccination. The day is drawing to a close in Siea in Western Kenya. Harriet's colleague Beatrice Owolcha is satisfied, even if the target of 200 vaccinations hasn't been reached. First dose we have given uh, 71, second dose we have given 50 something, and another second dose that is Moderna, uh, AstraZeneca we have given 13 doses. So we are at roughly 130. The team is tired as they pack up. It's not just the long hours in the sun, but also the constant uncertainty. It's not yet clear if they'll have enough gas money for next week or if they'll have to go back to using motorbikes again. So nurses are really facing a lot of burnout. I mean, after work, you just get tired. You don't, if you reach home, you don't even want to talk to the family members. You're tired, you just want to sleep. But today, they're going out together for a drink after work to brighten up the mood. According to the government, all Kenyan residents to be vaccinated by the end of next year. But Harriet knows that plenty will have to change to achieve that.